everybody, it's Henry! And Flowers and Flowers! <laughs> Good morning. It's Saturday. You guys are seeing this on Sunday. I'm always delayed like one or two episodes. You know, so I have time to really put it together well and then schedule it for the next day. It's good to be a little bit ahead of the game for a change. Usually I'm scrambling around trying to make a video because of my daily video obligation to you guys. Uh, sometimes I really try to rush it and I screw it up or something and then it takes me twice or three times as long to upload it. And sometimes you'll get like a midnight release, you know what I mean? But now I'm trying to stay ahead of the curve. But the weekends are tough for me because as you guys know, my dog Boba just got, it, got neutered. So I have other obligations in the house, making sure he doesn't jump up to the couches and stuff and keeps his little cone head thing on, you know? So uh, that's gonna probably delay my videos in the upcoming weeks or so. Um, this is what happened yesterday. Quinn the mailman just texted me again. There's a mower a couple blocks away. I'm gonna go check it out. There it is. It's another Toro Recycler. Unbelievable. Can you believe how many recyclers I've got recently? Thanks, Quinn. You're badass. This one's a personal pace. Personal pace, rear wheel drive. Wheels are good, quantum engine, 6.75. Had some gas <laughs> or water. It's got some dark earl. What do you think? Should we give it a boom? One, two, three, boom! One, two, three, boom! Yeah, it is an auto choke. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Same thing with the other one. Spark plug boot was unhooked. Talk about a wasteful society. Wouldn't you guys agree? I mean, I've gotten four or five Toro recyclers just in the past week. All of them just basically have small issues and just start right up, you know? Like the one I got the other day. It's not a personal pace, but it started right up with a bagger. Self-propelled worked. I think all we need to do is just uh, loosen this bolt, pull the wire more, so that when you do the personal pace, it has more room to pull. And I think this thing will work just fine. Also today, Oklahoma is playing Kansas State. I have to watch that. That starts in about an hour and a half. Gotta take a shower after that and head over to my friend Andy from Jericho's house uh, for the remainder of the evening. Can you believe what's been going on? In successive days, I got this one for free, thanks to a tip from Quinn the Mailman. I got this on uh, Thursday, and then yesterday, Friday, Quinn the Mailman says, same mower, different address. I'm like, really? Thanks. Hopped on over there, I was a half hour late, but it was sitting right there. You guys saw me pull up to it. Personal pace, as you also saw from uh, that clip that I just did. 
starts up with one pull or two pulls, something like that, you know? This thing's a little loose, minor thing, decent wheels, propulsion, I think, works. Rear propulsion. And it just needs an adjustment on this cable so that when you push down on the personal pace handle, right, it engages it better. I think it's just like worn or the cable stretched over time. And that might have been the reason why the owner threw it away. Oh, it doesn't propel well anymore. I gotta throw it away. But doesn't he know that he could just adjust the cable by loosening this nut and uh, pulling it this way a little bit? Just so when you push down on the handle, the cable is able to pull the engagement over here. And then it'll be good to go. As you also know, this one, which I got on Thursday, right? This started up in one pull also, but it kind of ran a little bit rough. Not that rough, but kind of rough. I adjusted the RPMs with this tab over here. And as you know, I also put some deep clean uh, fuel treatment in there just to see whether or not I could save myself a carburetor clean and uh, it runs fine with no problem. Now I do want to tell you one thing. My third one over here, right? This is the one with the uh, Kohler XT675 engine on it. I love it. I just weaseled a uh, free cover from Kohler to match the uh, missing one over here. But I'll tell you what, I mowed my lawn yesterday for it, right? And it has periodic smoking coming out. So I think the rings are gone. The rings are damaged or the cylinder wall is probably scored. So I think this engine might be done ski, which is a darn shame because uh, I like these engines a lot. But you know what? I do have this engine that had the sheared keyway and it needs a new brake, flywheel brake, uh, magneto kill assembly. This is a um, quantum engine that might work. So uh, in an upcoming video, I'm gonna replace this engine with that engine. Uh, let me show you. Put it up and you guys can see. As you can see, periodically, it smokes. Under load, off of load, it doesn't matter. Uh, as you know, I spent $15 on getting that uh, auto choke arm thermostat that I replaced, right? It seems to be working fine, but uh, it always smoked a lot. And the reason why was because I, I saw that it was overfilled with oil. And so I poured half of it out so that the levels were right, right on the mark, right? But, uh, that may not have been the whole problem. So this engine, while it works and stuff, it smokes and you can't have a smoky engine on such a nice mower, you know what I mean? So I think in the future, I'm gonna, near future, 
I'm gonna do a engine swap on this one because this is too nice of a mower for me to just say forget about it. <laughs> Not to mention the fact that I'm in it for $16 anyway already, right? But we're gonna address um, this one today. We're gonna try to make sure that that rear wheel drive um, situation works because then this could be cleaned up and listed for sale. But I can't list it for sale until I fix the uh, rear wheel drive. It, it, it moves a little, but it needs to be adjusted. Now, as you know, I put some deep clean in here to try to negate a uh, carburetor clean, right? So let's see if this one runs smoother with that deep clean without doing a carburetor. As you can hear, it still surges, which means that the carburetor is probably more dirtier than anything could fix just from pouring something in there. You know what I mean? So uh, we'll check. If we have time, we'll check out and see what the story is with this carburetor, right? But first, I'm gonna adjust that um, self-propulsion drive cable on this personal pace. So here we go. I'm gonna start it for the first time for today. When, when this happens, this pulls that way towards me, right? So you wanna loosen this nut, pull the cable that way so that this is more tighter. So then when you pull down, it'll engage that lever over there. So let me get a 7 16 7 16 Hold the cable so you know where it was. Loosen the cable a couple of turns. Uh, sorry, the nut. You're a nut. Pull that down. Bing, 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 bing. Do, 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 do. Another one bites the dust. Do, do, do. I pulled it down about three quarters of an inch. Oh, darn it. That's right, I'm not paying attention. I was loosening it. Don't over tighten, Henry. You'll pinch the cable. Shut up. Yep, so now it looks like it engages the cable a lot better. Let's give it a try. Now that we fixed this, there ain't nothing wrong with this thing. 
such a wasteful society. People just love throwing shit away for free all over the place. <laughs> but good for me that I'm a flipper. This is all like early Christmases. Let's take the carburetor off of that one and see how dirt tree it is. When the mailman came, so I had to shut everything down because we were talking for like another ah, 20 minutes or so. So anyway, I blew all the holes out, did a quick and dirty. The bowl really wasn't very dirty at all. Uh, so I just blew out the holes, let's just see. The plot thickens. Because now, of course, I went in the basement and started looking. Sweet. All right. Now I've got uh, three Toro recyclers. Well, actually, I have two more in the back, too. So I've got five Toro recyclers. I love these machines. Great machines. And uh, got to do an engine swap on that. But I've got two here that I got in consecutive days for free. That's right, free. But that's my video for today. My hands are a little dirty, not very dirty, but still nevertheless dirty. So I'm gonna go try a new product that got in the mail the other day. I wanted to show you guys something else. As I was about to put this away, uh, I took the bat, uh, I was looking at this thing and I didn't know what this was, right? This here is to, you can hook up a garden hose to this and you know, turn it on and then turn on the uh, mower and the blades will help agitate all the grass that and clippings and stuff that are stuck in the uh, underneath the deck well, that's that i didn't know what this was i i've never seen it before actually so i thought it was one of those you know they have a model of personal page where you can stow it and put it on your uh, on the back so i thought it might be some kind of a stand or something or a or a transmission lock but actually look you can push this thing in and there's the mulch cover that goes down down and blocks the grass from coming out if you wanted to mulch. So this is a mulch plug lever. Pretty cool. I've never had one like that. First time ever. So I thought I'd show that to you. I got a package from my friends over at Goop. First, we have a large canister of rough towels, waterless, multi-purpose with scrubbing power. Para limpiar sus manos y más. 
Yeah. I'm gonna try this on, actually I should try that now because that's what you need. If, it, if your hands aren't completely, you know, filled with grease and stuff, you could actually get away with just using that to pre-clean before you go into the house and wash, you know? But I wanted to try their main product, which is the Orange Goop. Natural citrus and pumice, waterless hand cleaner. This is what I want to try. Let's see what we el what else we have here. Well, we've got the hand towels, which are take with you types, you know, convenient portable ones where you can take with you. And we also have the uh, pre-moistened orange goop rough towel. Very cool. Whole bunch of them here. So I could keep those in my van. That would be useful, you know what I mean? Ooh, this one's actually, that this is this is actually wrapped for fragile stuff. I'm sorry, <laughs> fragile stuff. Fragile, it's French. Goop, waterless, multi-purpose hand cleaner. You know, I think I've tried this before, like at Larry's house or something. But you know what? Let's try the orange goop. So you can see my hands are dirty, but not. You know, not like an engine rebuild kind of dirty. You guys know what I mean, right? Let's see if it has uh Yeah, it's open. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna do, do like uh, maybe... That's enough, I think. That might be too much, actually. Hmm. Smells like Florida. Oh, see? So this is different from other ones that I've tried. I could feel uh, the grainy substance inside, like almost like sand, if you know what I mean. So I think that might be the pumice in there because this has natural citrus and pumice. So what the pumice does, it, it lets you, um, it almost has like a, um, you guys know what I mean, like a, like a rough consistency to it so that it gets the dirt out of your hands better than if it was just smooth and syrupy and lotion-y, you know what I mean? And it smells good too. It's like what I was saying the other day, uh, I used to use uh, Gojo. Right? Gojo, while it works fine, right? Just like uh, most of the hand cleaners work fine. Um, it stinks. I mean, you don't even want to breathe when you're using it. It's like, it has like this foul odor to it. So, you know, it's, it's unpleasant, you know, it's unpleasant. But this uh, orange stuff is great. Look, I'm getting uh, vitamin D from the sun. And also I feel like I'm in Florida on a beach because it's sandy, you know what I mean? So, uh, Still, you know, after, you know, agitating my hands a little bit, it's still um, kind of um, wet, you know? You, you would want that to dry a little bit more, but this is good because it gives you just enough time to get the dirt out of your hands. And then you just use like a towel or something and dry it off. <laughs> or just wipe it on your shirt, you know what I mean? But this is very cool, very nice. Um, as my videos are progressing, moving forward, uh, each job that I do, uh, I'm gonna finish with one of these products. Uh, I also got another shipment of uh, stuff from Clean Products, uh, Joe's Hand Cleaner, and they have like three other products that came with the two. And I'm going to be alternating the Goop and the Joe Hand Cleaner. And so uh, we could just try out every one of their products per episode, you know, but uh, if you guys would like to try some of this uh, Goop stuff, I'm sure you can find them pretty easily. Made in the USA, and it's uh, Kritzis Industries, St. Louis, Missouri. Mizzou! You can go and find Goop at uh, goophandcleaner.com. Check them out. Thank you, Diane, for sending this to me. I'm going to be using all your products in my upcoming videos. So that's my video for today. Getting the triplets ready to go, and also trying out some new products for mechanics, unlike me, flippers and wrenchers, our hands are very important to us. You gotta take care of them. Also, you need to clean your hands, man, before din time, you know? Anyway, thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode, fellas. We'll see you guys next time. I'm Overs and Blowers! This is Jungle Bob in Birmingham, Alabama. We'll see you next time on Mowers and Blowers.